Hello, hello, hello. Shabbat Shalom. And I want to welcome you guys this morning to Corinth's Hope Corner of Youth Sabbath Service with me, Pastor T. I want to ask you guys, how are you feeling today? Are you feeling okay? I really hope that you are feeling phenomenal by the grace of God. But today, I want to talk about something, something that we all should have inside of us, something that we should be really familiar with, and something that God wants us to do, okay? And what is it that God wants us to do? Let me show you exactly what I mean. God wants us to love. God loves you and God loves me. And we are here to not just love our family members, to love our aunts and uncles, to love our cousins and our brothers and sisters, but God is requiring us and he wants us to love everyone, everyone. That's people that you don't know. Those are strangers. Those are people that don't like you. God is calling us to love because Jesus was asked what was one of the most important commandments of them all. And it was love thy God with all thy heart and all thy mind and all thy soul and love your neighbor like you love yourself. So Jesus was asked and he said that that was one of the most important commandments. So we are definitely have to be individuals who show God's love. Okay, so before we go ahead and get started, let's start our morning off with a prayer. Father God, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus, thanking you for loving us, God, thanking you for loving us enough that you woke us up this morning with the opportunity to do something great, whether it's making someone smile, sharing love encouraging someone, telling someone that they're special in our lives, whatever it may be. We thank you for waking us up and giving us the opportunity to do something to show your love in us. But Father, not only are we thankful for that, we thank you for people who love us, the people who encourage us, letting us know that we're special, letting us know that we're smart, letting us know that we matter, and letting us know that they are listening when we're not feeling our best. So Father, as we go into this, Father, let it be blessed for anyone who's going to hear it to be encouraged. Because we want to talk about your love today, God. We want to talk about how awesome you are and the love that you've shown us and how we can show this love to the world. Father, I thank you right now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So the next thing I want to show you guys today is one of the most important scriptures about how much God loved you. Okay? And this scripture here is John 3.16, and it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Now, I want you guys to know how special this is. This is a special thing because everybody doesn't love you enough that they will give their only child to die so that you can be saved. But that's how much God loved you. And that's how much God thought of you. Because he wanted you to know that he wanted your love and he wanted your life so much that he sent his son to die for all of your sins so that you and God can be friends again. And we can be in reconciliation. So that means reconciliation, meaning 
back together. Okay? So when Jesus came and died for us, he was connecting us back to God. And that's how much God loves you. So I want to ask you a question today, this morning. I want to ask you, could you give me three things that you love? Okay? So give me one thing that you love. Okay? Now give me the second thing that you love. Okay. And give me the third thing that you love. All right. Now, some of us probably said mom and my dad or my sisters, but God love you, your mom, your sister. God loves the good guys. God loves the bad guys. God loves everyone. And that's why he sent his son to come to this world, because he loves us so much that he doesn't want us to be in sin. He doesn't want us or our souls to go down to that dark, bad place. He wants us to be in heaven with him. And he wants all of our souls. And that's why he sent Jesus to die, not just for me, but for you. He loves you. And I want to give you some scriptures, not just John 3, 16, about how God loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him, because you got to believe God, you got to believe in him, you wouldn't perish, but you'll have everlasting life in heaven with God and Jesus. But I want to tell you some guys some, some, some things that if you love somebody, some of the characteristics that you should have because you love them, all right? And I really want to break this down to you guys because I want you guys to really be encouraged on knowing that what love looks like, what love should possibly sound like, and how you can do this with your friends, your family, strangers, or even your enemies. Because God does call us to love our enemies. So today we're going to talk about and going to come from 1 Corinthians. This is going to be chapter 13, verse 4 through verse 7. And the word of God says, love is patient. So that means you don't have to, you can't rush people you, when they're not doing good and you want them to hurry up and do the right thing. You can't, you, God doesn't want you to get frustrated with them. God wants you to love them enough that you're going to be patient with them. And not only is love patient, love is kind. Love is asking someone, how are you doing? Love looks like opening the door for an older person. Love looks like helping one of your neighbors carry their groceries in the house. Love looks like cleaning up your room without your mom having to tell you to do so. Love is patient and love is kind. And love does not get jealous. So one of your siblings got straight A's and maybe you didn't get straight A's. God doesn't want you to be angry with them. Kind of like our last week's story about Cain and Abel. He doesn't want you to get jealous and he doesn't want you to get angry at your brother. He wants you to be happy that they are doing great things. And he wants you to use that to be your encouragement to do great things also. So God doesn't want you to be angry with your sibling or someone who's doing something um, that you may feel is better than what you're doing. He doesn't want you to get angry with them. He wants you to be happy for them. Love isn't rude. When someone is talking to you, you want to love them enough that you listen. And sometimes listening is hard, especially sometimes I know when I was younger and my mom was telling me that I should have done the right thing or I should have done something differently or I wasn't listening to her, you know, I, I, you know, I had to love my mother and respect her because I know that she was telling me things that would help me. So I had to love her enough to never be rude and tell her whatever or I know or okay or all right, 
you know, or things like that. You want to show that love because love is respect. So when you love your parents and they're talking to you about things you need to change or things that you can do better on, listen, because God loved you enough to give you ears to love your parents enough to use those very ears that God gave you to listen. Love does not rejoice in wrongdoing. That means, say for instance, you've seen two of your friends fighting or two people fighting, you know, love is not going to rejoice in wrongdoing. So meaning you're not going to pull out your phone and record that fight. You know, you're not going to, you know, post it on social media. You know, you're not going to show it to your friends, you know, because that's wrongdoing. We shouldn't fight each other. No one should. Because we love Christ and Christ love us. And God is telling us that we are supposed to love. So we love someone and we have a problem with them. You want to try to talk it out. You want to try to talk it out with them. God wants you to love people enough to rejoice in the truth. And sometimes the truth can be a little hard, guys. It can because maybe the truth isn't always what someone wants to hear. Um, for an example, uh, my daughter, she uh, doesn't like to get up on time, you know? So um, she lets her alarm go off and she just cuts it off and then it'll come back on and she'll cut it off again. And sometimes she sleeps so hard that she doesn't even bother to cut it off and it'll just go on and on and on and on and on and on. <laughs> So it was hard to tell her, you need to be a bit more responsible and get up when your alarm goes off so that you are not late for school. Because again, sometimes we don't want people to tell us what to do, but she respected me enough to listen. And I was have to be truthful with her and honest with her about something that she needed to change. So even though it may not have been something that may have been the best or the most comfortable thing to say to her, it was an honest truth that I needed to share with her so that she could do better, so that she'll be on class on time. You get what I'm coming from? Love bears all things and hopes all things and endures all things. So sometimes life may get hard. School may get a little difficult. You know, friendships may change and get a little different because you moved into a new neighborhood and things like that. But love where you are. Love that you have a home. Love that you have a roof over your head. Love that God blessed your parents so that you're able to have these things. But God wants to see your heart. It's your heart that reflects God. It's your kind words that reflects God. It's your thoughtfulness. It's your love. It's your kindness. It is the God in you that we supposed to show every single day, all right? So I wanna challenge you to tell me, one, three things that you love about yourself. Tell me three things, three things that you love about yourself. I'm gonna start too, I'm gonna do mine and I want you to do yours. So I'm gonna let you do yours and then I'll do mine, fair enough? Excellent. All right. So give me one thing that you love about yourself. Not bad. Okay. Now give me the second thing that you love about yourself. Okay. And give me one more thing that you love about yourself. Awesome. Awesome. One thing that I love about me is my heart. I really care about people. I really care if they're doing well. I really care if they're okay. So sometimes, you know, when people always ask, how are you doing? We get so quick and in a hurry and we always say, oh, I'm fine and keep it moving. But I stop and actually ask, how are you doing? And I stay there to actually listen to see what they're feeling and actually how they're doing. I love that about myself. 
I love that God gives me joy. Sometimes life gets a little challenging, but he always reminds me that there's no storm that I'm going to have to go through, that he's not going to be there with me. So I love that I have faith in God. I love that I believe him. And I love my smile. I like showing my teeth. I love my smile. It's nice and big. I don't know. Maybe I'm part human, maybe part alligator. I don't know. I got a lot of teeth, guys. But I love them. Because even though I may not look like anybody else in the world, God would always remind us that we are uniquely made. There's nobody in the world like you. So not only does God want you to love your neighbors and your enemies, God wants you to love you too. And I want to thank you for sharing those three things that you love about yourself. Because sometimes you're going to need to encourage yourself. So you always want to try to find time to remind yourself three great things about you. It'll surely help cheer you up. All right, but I want to invite you parents to our core to this whole corner of you. Well, you will be able to see our videos, what we're doing out in our youth ministry, uh, some of our up and coming uh, events that will be soon to take place. So definitely keep your eye on the website because more is to come. And we definitely would love to, if you're in the Philadelphia, Delaware, Jersey area, in the tri-state area, to definitely come and join us and be a part of what we believe in. Because we don't want anyone to walk in this world hopeless. When we can be your GPS to hope, not just for your little ones, but for you too. God is love. And this is what we're here to offer you guys. Love. God's love. Because God loved us enough to send his son so that we can reconcile, get back together with God. And if you don't have a church home, please consider us. For your parents, if you want your child to go through a step-by-step -step of Bible stories, I want you guys to click the link below. And it will give you a listing of Bible stories uh, starting at Genesis. And not only will you be able to see the videos, you will also be able to hear uh, the videos as well. So I really want to encourage you guys to do so. We also have links to activities, uh, coloring pages that you guys will be able to take advantage of, where you can just print them out and have your children find interesting ways in spending time with God, um, not just only on the Sabbath day, but every day. God is love. And if we are made in God, then people should see the love in us. My friends, per the use, it's always a pleasure hanging out with you. And I want to leave you guys with this scripture and a prayer before we go. Father, we thank you, God, for loving us. And the lesson for us to actually know that your love is beyond just us. You love our parents. You love our friends. You love our enemies. And you even love those who are not saved. We thank you for loving everybody in the world. And we thank you for loving us so much, God, that you sent your son to die for our sins so that we could come back to you, God. We thank you for him, Jesus. We thank you that you love the world so much that you gave your only begotten son. So that if we believe in who you are and who he is, that we are saved. Father, we thank you for saving us. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for being there for us. And Father, as we depart, Lord, we ask that you never leave our side and camp your angels around us, O oh God. Keep us strong, keep us humbled, 
and always remind us that we should show love to everyone just like you do. And we ask this all in Jesus' name. And I want to give you the opportunity, if you do not know God for yourself, and if you are ready to give your life to God, I want you to repeat after me. Father, I come to you as a sinner looking to be saved by your grace. Father, I believe that Jesus Christ died for my sins and rose on the third day. And I invite you, God, and the Holy Spirit to come into my life to change, correct, and encourage me for all the days of my life. And I ask this all in Jesus' name. And if you decided to give your life to God today, the angels in heaven are screaming and shouting and clapping for you. And I'm going to give you a round of applause too, because it's not easy to give your life to God, but it will be one of the most important and best things you could have ever done. And I want to leave you guys with this before I let you go. That God so loved the world. He loved you so much. He loved you so much. That he gave his only son. His only son. For your life. He loves you that much. And I want you to be encouraged to know that you got a friend in Jesus. But you can also stand on the fact that God loves you. And I love you too. Shabbat Shalom.